There was a time when it was fairly easy to classify art. It was the Monet or the Emily Carr hanging in the gallery. Mozart played at the local concert hall. Now, it isn't so easy. High technology has sparked a revolution in the artistic world, as well as some confusion with our old concepts of what art is. The computer has made inroads in all areas, leaving some artists wondering where technology ends and art begins. As the journal Sue Prestige reports, there's a fine line between art and science. Banff, Alberta, home of the Banff School of Fine Arts. Artists have come here to question how technology and science are affecting their work. Artists like the intense composer of Stealing Thunder, Jean Pichet, surrounded by a soundboard, a tape filled with computer-generated music, and the sole human contribution, the drums. Normally, the fine arts campus is filled with those who come to study opera, drama, and painting. But for three days, the sounds of synthesizers and images of computer graphics will invade this tranquil setting. It was a simple time when the Banff School of Fine Arts opened in 1933. Artists came here to capture the majesty of the mountains. A paintbrush, a palette, and a canvas were the only tools required. Now there's a new breed of artists cloistered inside these buildings. Artists that may have to know as much about the high-tech tools of science as they do about the theories of art. This is a meeting of artists to whom technology is the tool, where modems and bites replace watercolors and oils. Those attending have come to see and hear the up-and-comers in science art. They're also here to see the high-tech pioneers, like Emil Raddick, who stunned Expo 67 visitors in Montreal with his multi-image video production, The Creation of the World. The Czech-born artist is back at it again this year in Vancouver with The Taming of the Demons. Raddick takes each of these rear screen projections and turns it into a component of one large picture. He'll reverse and even use images upside down in order to achieve the effect he wants. Raddick was trained as a traditional painter, but once he discovered technology, the sky was the limit. Like Emil Raddick, Norman White began his career as a traditional artist. In fact, he still dabbles in drawing in his Toronto studio. But now his passion is creating art through technology. Along with Doug Back, a former sculptor, they've created a new way to reach out and touch someone. The art form is called telepresencing, sending and receiving sensations over the phone. Well, basically, we have a a device that's a arm wrestling machine created by Norman White myself. It feels position information, comes out through a sensor, gets translated into electronic signal, goes out over the telephone line through a thing called a modem. So if someone who has the identical arm is can be anywhere else in the world as long as they have a telephone, hooked up to that through the telephone line and Norman White's electronic box here, and if they move their arm, as is happening right here, um, this arm moves. And if I resist that movement... Get your elbow there. Okay, sorry. If I resist that movement, the other person's arm is slowing down right now. So it's as if I am actually grabbing that person's arm right now. But is this mass of wires and sensors really art? <sighs> We're, we're breaking ground, and we don't really uh, half the time know whether it's art or not, nor is it important to us. The main thing is it's an exploration that we find tremendously um, intriguing, and it somehow ties into everything that's happening around us. When we talk about telepresencing, we say, if I'm at A, I want to be at B. My feeling was that there was another possibility. That other possibility is artificial reality. Its creator, Myron Kruger, doesn't apologize for not having an arts background. He's a computer whiz. Artificial reality is created by using a video camera, a projector, and a computer. 
a person's outline is projected on any movement forces the computer to react using a little green digital character called the critter. And the critter has all sorts of different behaviors and I play with them as if you were a graphic pet. And it's designed to tell you about the, the sort of artificial world that we're entering. He's the first step, a playful creature who will come out and engage you in a new kind of play. Your body now is, is interacting on the screen. Kruger sees scientific applications for the critter. For instance, it could be used in the treatment of autistic children. The idea is that an autistic child doesn't want to interact. And most important, it doesn't want to interact with people. But that's the, the most upsetting thing. Now, in the, this system, I can focus the computer on his behavior so that no matter how small his behavior, I can respond to it. And I can lead him into larger and larger behaviors. So there's no way he can withdraw. There's no possibility of not interacting. This is artificial reality as well. It's artistic side, body surfacing. Moment by moment, you're creating something beautiful, but that beautiful thing changes so that you have to keep moving. And you, you don't think about sitting back and looking at the result because you can create something equally beauty beautiful the next 10 seconds. Being involved and thinking about it instant by instant rather than capturing it and hanging it on the wall. Most people complain of being artistically inept. Kruger believes the computer allows them to create at will. The computer is the most important event of our time in a sense, and it's a cultural event, not just a technological event. So the computer has to be communicated to people and not as a technical, here's how it works things, but here's what it might be. But arm wrestler Doug Back is concerned young artists might be caught up in the technology and forget artistic merit. You get overtaken by the technology. You're producing images and other things that have never existed before, and you don't have much time to stand outside of the technology and look at the piece itself. You're too wrapped up in learning the technology, using the technology itself. Technology has probably had more of an influence on music than any other art form. Science has not only had an effect on the sounds the instruments make, but in some cases, replaced the instruments themselves. That's what has Jerry Ozipko of Edmonton worried. He's writing a book about music and technology and is attending this conference to collect ammunition. Uh, there used to be a time where a person sat down at a keyboard and slugged over scales and uh, pieces, repertoire, and learned a repertoire and, and, and an interpretation of that repertoire where there was the hard sweat that was involved. And now with programmable instruments, you can put in notes one at a time. You have a device that will alter your rhythm, correct it if you make rhythmical errors. Um, you push a switch, go down and sit down and enjoy the concert with the audience. And, and uh, I don't know, I think that sort of destroys a little bit of the atmosphere of what music is all about. Yeah, and th that, that has been done, and, and uh, it has been the problem of electronic music. Indeed, that's quite correct uh, in the level of performance. It doesn't make it any less music or art. It's what you hear that's the product, finally. Jean Pichet has been composing electronic music for 15 years. He begins from scratch, creating the sounds on his computer in his Ottawa studio. He transfers the computer-generated music to tape. It acts as a backup orchestra of sorts for the live performer, in this case, percussionist Trevor Tureski. I disagree with the point that a lot of people have made, that electronic music has taken out the imagination or the, the, the human aspect of making of music making because in the final analysis machines are just machines and music has been concerned with machines ever since it has existed. Uh, a flute is a machine and a piano is certainly a very complex machine. Many artists may feel more confident about using high tech when they leave this conference. Who knows, there may come a day when Kruger's artificial reality is as well known as the work of A.Y. Jackson. For The Journal, I'm Sue Prestige in Banff, Alberta.